made it back. Oh, man. I ain't too, too late. I changed it to 420 and got on that 32 game. Oh, uh, 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 uh. man. <laughs> Let me get my water. Oh, hey, why are everybody mad at my background, man? King Mills, what up? Why everybody mad at my background? You know what? What am I doing? I need my mic. And my headphone. Un momento, guys. Let me get some music on here. I knew I shouldn't have went outside. Let me get this on the screen, man. And I wish I never did it. I'm an angry vegan, y'all. I mean, I feel okay with this vegan stuff. Y'all can hear me just fine? All right. Well, then I won't go get it. Thumbnail lady, having a toe like yours is lame, right? So if I don't need my mic and I don't need my headphones, I'll just go ahead and go with it then. Because my boy Carcino, I think he answered Stephen A. questions why he was at those colleges in high school. I think we got the answer to it. Do I think Stephen A. will respond? No, but I was just shocked and appalled that Carcino for life, my boy, I was shocked and appalled that Carcino agreed with LeBron James on something. I said, what? I looked at the title. I said, huh? I thought somebody had Carcino paid. I ain't going to lie. I started to call Carcino. I said, no, nah, if it's really him. I'm not going to call him. So I jump in on the live and it was him. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I super chatted him because I wanted to hear, oh man, I got the trail mix that got this other stuff in it that I don't like. Man, like what the heck is this little thing? I don't think I'm going to eat this tray. I'm going to pick around it. Yeah, but I thought somebody stole and had Carcino paid. I'm like, there's no way Carcino agree with LeBron James. So then as I go in, I'm listening to the topic, and Carcino was right on the money. Because <clears throat> they used me as the poster child to get this thing passed in 2006 where it bans high school players from coming to the league. Because it wasn't just me, Derek Smiles. Man, listen, it was high school. They had already projected it. All of your top picks were going to come out of high school for the next eight or nine years. All of your top picks would have came out of high school. Um, We had like five or six players, my draft class, high school players in the top 13 picks. Three, I think, in the top five. That's unheard of. So do you know how much money that would have lost colleges all around the world? 
Do you know when they call me crazy, I laugh because they know I'm telling the truth. Um, For a McDonald's All-American to hit a college campus, I don't know how much they get now with these new NIL deal, but I know the school would get a couple of million dollars per McDonald's All-American. So that's why you had a lot of colleges just trying to get players to sign a letter of intent. I learned about the letter of intent because a couple of colleges asked me, they said, I know you go on the University of Florida just sign a letter of intent and I'll give you 300,000. And the purpose of a letter of intent is so that they can go recruit other players based on you coming to that school. So when I was going to go to college, I was going to go to University of Florida. So when I signed up, uh, David Lee came and he was going to play because uh, I saw him at the Peach Jam. So David Lee wanted to play with me. Also, uh, James White. James White went to the University of Florida because of me. So James White knew that his slashing style and his uh, the way he jumped. You know, I'm 6'10", 6'11". Can grab the ball off the rim and go take it coast to coast. That's what Florida basketball was about. You know, a bunch of athletic bigs that can handle the ball. So James White would have been great because oh, I don't like this shit. Sorry, y'all. Because I can also pass the ball just like I can do everything else with the ball because I played point guard before I grew. So Florida would have been crazy. It would have been me, David uh, Lee, and James White. If I would have stayed another year, Anthony Roberson would have came. Um, I think UD would have still been there, too. So we would have had a whip stick. So to this day, when I see James White, he was like, God damn, I can't stand you. <laughs> to this day, he'd be like, I can't stand you. Because I think James White ended up transferring. But, yeah. If you think David Lee had game, <laughs> you should have saw me at the Peach Jam. Remember, they told me to go get a rebound. So that's what I did. But, yeah, he transferred to Cincinnati. But um, there was a healthy, uh, there was a lot of hate for LeBron when he first came out. Carcino is actually telling the truth. And LeBron is telling the truth. Because I remember everybody talking about it. I wanted to see him do well personally because I knew that MJ was the number one draft pick and I was just the nigga that was there. So I wanted to see another young cat shine or get the opportunity to shine because for the first time in my life, I'm being thrown in in garbage minutes. We down 20. Uh, we getting blowed out. They put you in the game and then everybody talk about how many points you scored. I'm like, what are we supposed to do in a free for all? That's like playing at the rec league. Have y'all watched NBA games when there's a 20 point blowout and they put you in with three minutes to go? Do you watch what the players do? <laughs> do you think they actually give a God who? They just running out there, just throwing the ball up so we can get the hell up out of there because we already will. But they got all of you believing I can't play based on numbers <laughs> with no details. The majority of my minutes my entire rookie year were in garbage minutes. Anybody who understands basketball understands garbage minutes. But that's neither here nor there. LeBron, his whole ideal of a high school player coming straight from the NBA 
I mean, high school to the NBA, it was shunned upon. They would write articles and and try to over exaggerate things that they claim I did. I remember one time I went, to, like I said, I went to jail in Valdosta, Georgia. I don't cry racism. I don't do none of that dumb shit. But my cousin at the time was intoxicated and this girl had the keys. But apparently him and this girl got to argue. And so she drove us to the club. Uh, he get the keys from her, decide to move the vehicle. And this idiot gets pulled over <laughs> moving the vehicle. So I come outside the nightclub. Long story short, the police tell me to get back on the curb. But then he told me to shut the fuck up or something stupid. And I said, that's not a lawful order. And he said, uh, back up. And I took another step back. And he said, shut the fuck up again. And I said, that's not a lawful order. And he arrested me for disorderly conduct. And if anybody know anything about Valdosta, Georgia, they hand out uh, disorderly conducts like, like you drinking water. That's I think that's how they pay for Valdosta. Just give, giving people disorderly conduct. You bet not. Basically, you bet not say shit because you're going to jail. They'll figure out a way to give you disorderly conduct down there. And basically, disorderly conduct is talking. <laughs> so, David Stern bringing me in. He's talking crazy. They write this article about it. They make it this big thing. They blow it up. So, I'm looking at David Stern. And I'm wondering to myself, why all the media go so crazy with me before they know anything? And it's interesting because I heard Stephen A. say, well, Josh Giddy, we don't know all the facts. Okay, I was arrested, but I thought it was guilty or innocent until proven guilty. And and that's exactly what happened. I was the, the judge saw what was going on. It was immediately thrown out because that wasn't a lawful order. The lawful order that he gave me was step back. In the video, I'm stepping back onto the curb. When he said step back again, I stepped back again. It's just the part where he told me to shut the fuck up. I had to let him know. That is not a lawful order. You shut the fuck up. And that's what happened. And so I went to jail and David Stern wants me to be apologetic for some white cop telling me to shut the fuck up and thinking that I'm supposed to shut the fuck up because he said so. And I'm just not that type of person. And so he tried to get me to understand that I was embarrassing the league just for being arrested, period. And I said, no, it don't work like that. I was illegally arrested, unlawfully arrested. I'm not embarrassing anybody. You should be saying sorry that happened to me. But well, we didn't see eye to eye on that. Thank God for Chris Chin because they tried to make every single little incident, even though I'm in the right, they were trying to kick me out the league every step of the way. So that's how I knew Stephen A. was hired to do that job, which is to make it look like a bad thing to come out of high school, to over exacerbate, if you will. Big word, Willie Williams. Anything a young player would do, you know. And Carcino broke it down so well. I thought Disney was paying Car um uh, I thought Disney was paying Stephen A to go to those high schools and colleges because I was wondering why would Disney have an interest in that? Maybe to keep kids dumb and unmotivated, not dreaming. I don't know. But the colleges would have a grave, a real vested interest to bring a Stephen A because at the time he he was hot as show. And if I'm a college and I'm losing millions of dollars, it would make sense to get these kids to think they can't do it. Even though one of the best players that ever played is out of high school and Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. And if they didn't play the sabotage button with me, I would have been a hell of a, I would have been right up there with them. I mean, I don't know got down 40,000 points. I can keep it real. I wouldn't have had no fucking 40,000 points. But nevertheless, you know what I mean. Damn, I got to pick through all this garbage. 
NCAA paid ESPN to send Stephen A. I don't know. I guess Stephen A was on his own. I just don't understand the correlation between what can Stephen A. Smith teach a college player about doing a stand-up comedic style roast about a 19-year-old that made it to the highest level of his profession and that's making more money than everybody in the room laughing. I just didn't, I don't understand what he was teaching them. And cause when you go to a college and a university to speak, you're supposed to be teaching them something. So what was he teaching them by talking about me as an NBA player? And that's why Stephen A won't come have a conversation with me because he won't be able to answer that question. I was just talking about your game. Off work, in high schools and colleges, you were talking about my game. Hmm, huh, why? Out of all the NBA players, why me? And how do you know all these college players are even interested in basketball? They're going for a higher learning. So Stephen A, there's no need to clout chase you. That's why you go every other weekend to say my name on your show. Carcino pointed out in this video as well. They've conditioned people to like dissing me so much that you just bring my name up. That shit, damn, they get you a million views. So I don't think Stephen A is going to ever stop talking about me. But now he has to do it in a way where he looks like the victim. So that's his play now. I'm feeling like a bird eating these little damn bird seeds. His handers won't allow it. Oh, I'll destroy Stephen A. Smith in a conversation. He's he, what are you gonna say? What are you gonna say to the fact to the fact that you went to high schools and colleges to talk about a man? And then when I can show you my minutes played, the time that I got in the game, so we can debunk this whole numbers narrative. And I have an agent that is a pretty cool agent, so he broke down how he was getting me all those contracts, even though the negative media spin was on my name. Even when I averaged almost a double-double in Charlotte, the reason why teams wouldn't give me an extension on the contract, they only gave me a one-year deal, was because it was like, man, the fans are going to be like, what the fuck are we doing signing Kwame Brown to $40, $50 million? Even though if you look at Tyrus Thomas's numbers, mine was almost identical when he got 40, 000, 40 million from the bull uh when he got from the bulls to charlotte so but how are you going to get the fans excited about paying a bus 40 million dollars doesn't look like your team is going up if all the media got all these kids in hysteria laughing and calling the guy a bus every draft day surely why would how are we going to get the media and the fans to get why we gave this guy 40 million dollars because they're not looking at the paper that his agent has in front of us that when this guy get the minutes, what his number says. They're not looking at this paper. We're looking at this paper. So Stephen A can't have no conversation with me. That's why the only thing Stephen A can do is make jokes and make it seem like what I'm saying is not real and make it seem like I'm clout chasing. But no, I'm not making it seem like anything. Stephen A, you were paid to make it look bad to come from high school. And you cost me a lot of money, Stephen A. You know you did. Cost me a shit ton of money. That's why I don't like the way you guys talk about these players now. If they have a bad game, they do something stupid, you can get on them, call them stupid, call them dumb. But the way you talk about these players' game and you can't even fucking play, what gives you the right to talk like that? What gives you the right to talk about somebody's contract? What gives you the right to get fans because the – NBA is fan driven. So when the, when the fans are using these little pundits catchphrases and little shit that they're saying, how are we going to sign Westbrook to the deal he deserved when everybody's calling him West Brick? We can't pay a West Brick. We can still pay him. Let's shorten the terms. Let's do this to the deal. Let's do that. So the fans can say, okay, they got him at a good deal. Even though he's a top fucking 75 even though he's probably still giving you a double-double, damn near a triple-double, 
but he's going to turn the ball over. So let's not talk about what he does well. Let's go out there and highlight what he does bad. I wonder if they did that to every player. I wonder if they went out there and said, damn, LeBron turned the ball over four fucking times. No, they overlooked those turnovers, and they talk about he got 30-something points. It's all about the media coverage. They can easily talk about how Westbrook is motor is so high that you overlook the turnovers because of all the other things he's going to do. He's going to be in there to chuck the big man rolling down to the lane. He's going to give you everything he got. That's why this guy keeps playing, not because of his jump shot. So we're not even going to talk about that because look at the way that they talk about Patrick Beverly. He's not the greatest shooter in the world, but they're not out there talking about his jump shot and the things that he lack in. They talking about the things that he's great at. Why don't they talk about the things that Westbrook is great at instead of saying West brick. These guys would have nothing to talk about. They have no credentials. These white companies put all this money behind personalities. They're not real journalists. They don't really know the game. They don't know shit about basketball. So why do you think they're always talking about somebody's the way they're behaving or the way they're looking or how many points somebody's scoring? They ain't nothing but statisticians. We all can look up how many points somebody's scoring. They don't got nothing to do with the breaking down the game. They don't know anything about the game. They don't even have the players – that play the game now and Shaq and Kenny, they don't even have them breaking down the game because they want y'all thinking about everything in sound bites. They're not going to be any true more true basketball fans in the next 10 years. It's just only going to be people that like the person who shoot the ball all the time. It's stat, it's stat driven now. Hold on. Let me read this. How do you feel about Jason Tatum uh, just now meeting Bird for the first time? Huh. <laughs> That's Boston. What you mean? The star player just meeting Bird. That's crazy, B. He time times did an interview with a former GM named Pete. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Damn, that wasn't nice, uh, YouTube. What the hell is going on, man? My whole computer done cut off. <laughs> Yo, my computer won't even turn back on. What in the... Damn, son. Uh, I got my phone. <laughs> they keep, what the fuck is going on with my computer? I ain't never seen an Apple like this. All of a sudden, now, I can't even use my laptop. Car, hey, Carcino, they don't want me to use that goddamn video you had, boy. It all starting to make sense, old goddamn Stephen A. And it makes sense that you keep talking to everybody but me. If he's so tough, like he say, he's so tough, and he don't got down. He, he don't know. He ain't scared of nobody. He don't run for nobody. Why in the world this Joker won't come have a conversation with me? Why you got to keep bringing up my name but won't come talk to me? She don't, don't have COVID. Doctor says it's respiratory infection. Salute to you, man. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, see, no, they just kicked me out my stream yard, turned my computer off. 
Hey, they was fucking with your video so hard when you were playing it. They, they don't even want me to play it. I might need to leave that video alone. <laughs> Appreciate your super chat, bro. Oh, Stephen A work out every day and taking boxing classes? Man, I ain't gonna lie, man. I'm gonna run across the street. I don't want no parts of Stephen A, man. The way I've been roasting him lately. And I know he's sensitive, man. He might got some pent-up anger. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run across the street. I don't want that Steve Urkel to beat me up. Imagine losing to Steve Urkel. Uh, uh, uh goddamn, not Steve Urkel. Imagine losing to Stephen A. I'd rather get y'all seeing me running than losing to him. I can make up something for me running. I was late to a meeting, man. I ain't got time to fuck around with Stephen A. He gonna call the police on me. But if he actually whooped me, no, oh, hell no. Every time I go live, y'all will be like, man, Stephen A whooped y'all. Whooped you, what? Y'all brown boys ain't shit. Yeah, I can't I can't let him whoop me now. I gotta run. Yeah. I'm gone. And I ain't real, so I can't hit him with the Draco. So I just gotta hit him with the feet. I gotta put the feet on the curve and run. Uh-huh. I'm not losing to Stephen A, bro. Damn, my computer just cut off again. What the? Hey, see, no, boy, they ain't gonna let me play this video. How the hell does a laptop keep cutting on and off for whatever reason? I need to get another VPN or something. Hey, see, no, they blocking your video, bro. They gonna block your video. Damn. Yo, my computer just turned right back off after it turned on. It's it's plugged up to the charger. No water damage. Just did a little live earlier. <laughs> he was practicing punching you in the ankle. In the stomach on that video. The ankle in the stomach. <laughs> Man, listen. I'm telling you. He come at me with them boxing skills. I'm running across the street. I don't know how to fight that shit. He unorthodox. Hey, that motherfucker unorthodox. I can't fight no nigga that's just aiming for my nuts and my feet. Yeah, the guy want to punch me in the scrotum and the feet. I can't fight nobody like that. No me illegal blow. But, dang, I can't even play the video, man. Now my laptop is to the point where, okay, it's turned on. Let's see if it's going to stay on. I think I better stop exposing Stephen A. Hey, Ty, this shit. We gave that motherfucker a new contract. He just a bust. Hey, man, just give me a job, man, and give me some of that goddamn money back y'all took from me, and then I'll leave Stephen A alone then. How about that? I'm standing on the open air for you. I'll stop exposing this nigga. Just give me a nice little studio. Let me do what the fuck I want. <laughs> yeah, bring some sponsors in and pay me. Pay me real good. And goddamn, uh, make sure I have a little host that can that can uh, ask me good basketball questions. And I'll go ahead and, you know, do my thing and then I'll leave that nigga alone. Other than that, we're going to keep exposing this nigga. One step jab, you knocking him out. Nah, I'm running across the street. Okay, let's see if this computer stay on long enough. Damn, see, you know, your video wiped the hell out. Let me see if I can put it back up here. I had it time stamped and everything. Now I got to go back and find the time stamp. Man, ain't this about a brisket? Yeah, pay me my money back that y'all took. 
And then we Gucci man, you know what I mean? Took a lot of money from me now. I need a me money. Yeah, all you got them colleges. I, I got, you know what? Um, I don't want to put nobody on the spot. But I want to say this. If anybody can find a list of all the colleges that Stephen A. went to go speak and the high schools that he spoke at, I think I'm going to visit those high schools and those colleges online. I think that'll make for good content. I want to go there and ask, what was the purpose of bringing Stephen A. Smith? Since he won't answer my question, I think it'll be great content. If I go to those colleges and ask them, why were they teaching the young minds some stand-up style comedic jokes by NBA analysts in the way that y'all did? One year removed from high school. Why did you do that? What was the purpose? Were you pressured to do that? What did the students learn? I think that'd be great. Damn, now the computer cut off again. As soon as I get that motherfucker loaded up. See, no, they're not going to let that video. They're going to take that video down. Yeah, he better come to do an interview with me, goddamn. <laughs> he better come, come on do something, goddamn. I'm gonna turn up the heat. I want to know. Yeah, I got. I'm gonna make that my YouTube now. I gotta find out why does high schools and colleges do what they did, and when they have done that to a black girl. I'm gonna get my journalistic hat on. I'm going to say, why did y'all do that to the first black male that accomplished something so great that's in the Guinness Book of World Records? Why would you guys pile on and do that? I want to know. But Big Zeno, I don't know what's going on, but it don't look like they're going to let me play this video. Yeah, all of a sudden, my computer don't work. Yeah, my computer broke as hell. Hey, that's messed up, Jack. I got a broken down computer. Man, people hate the truth this day and age. I can't wait for somebody to pick up this video so everybody can say, Kwame's crying again. They ain't going to look at the facts and evidence. They done dumb people down so much. That's why the feds always follow the money. I, I understand now why the feds always follow the money. Because it's usually money behind everything. Every evil deed is usually some money. Nobody cares that a little poor black kid from Georgia picked himself up by the bootstrap, bust ass, and made it to the league only to have uh, that bother, you know, the way of life, the way it's supposed to go. God damn, I always get in my own way because I'm bothering the way it's supposed to go. I said, fuck your college. I'm going to the NBA. So I'm bothering the way it's supposed to go. And I, who the hell this uppity nigger think he is? So they don't care that they had these goddamn guys disrespect my name and call me lazy when I'm one of the hardest working niggas you ever been around. Say all kind of things that people just regurgitate like... Cattle, whatever the narrative they put out, nobody even asked me. Nobody even took the time. Sally Jenkins wrote an article as if I can't tie my shoe, chew bubble gum, and walk at the same time. But the sad part about it is it'd be black people telling me what the fuck this white dummy said when my transcript from Glen Academy High School is online. <laughs> you can literally go look it up. Shit is crazy. He said he it didn't know it would have affected me. So a guy that can't play basketball, going to high schools and colleges, telling kids don't strive to be like Kwame Brown, a guy who just took his family from poverty to fucking riches, 
Don't be like that. Just go to school, work a job, be a worker bee. Don't be like him. Don't strive for greatness. Because if the ultimate goal, if my ultimate goal was to make it to the NBA, which it was, I achieved it. So it's all about how you paint the story. So instead of letting that dumb dweeb that didn't accomplish anything in life tell the story of Kwame Brown, you could have invited me to those same very colleges and let those kids ask me, how do you feel you're so great that you could skip a step? And I would have told them. Why would you bring a guy to a college that didn't accomplish nothing to talk about somebody that had accomplished something? Doesn't make any sense. It don't make sense at all. Unless you're trying to get these kids to believe that they're not good enough. Look at this guy. Who the fuck take uh, a story of, because what they did essentially was made me look like a failure and they're teaching kids the story of a failure. How is that beneficial at a college where you're supposed to be brightening up minds and teaching them smart things? Like, why would you teach them that? And if you're going to teach them that playing basketball is the only thing in life, why didn't you teach them the economic side of things? So now Stephen A. gets up here and he got to keep swaying the narrative. He got to keep Kwame's angry. Kwame's good. Stephen A., if I was angry, there's a multitude of things I could have done to you to show you I was angry. A multitude. Not one time did I express to you I was angry until I went live. And I wasn't angry then. You people are just not used to hearing people tell you straight like it is. And I sat quiet because I knew what was going on. You are a puppet. You're paid to be a puppet. And you're protecting Michael Jordan's image. And you thought that by bashing me, it would help you. Every Anybody can see it when they really look. But there's going to be an atonement for your situation, Stephen A. You already know it. You can feel it, don't you? Every day you think about it. A damn dummy. <laughs> A little dummy. Even your daddy said that to you. I taught you probably more listening to me. I probably taught you more than you knew. You didn't have to kiss all the butts you've been kissing. If you think you're so great, you should have been started your own show. Imagine that. Stephen A. Smith, the great guy that keep telling you how number one he is, never started a show of his own until Kwame Brown came to YouTube. And now guess where Stephen A. is now again? YouTube. You cannot leave me, boy. Even when I was done playing, you kept talking about me. He did apologize, though. How do you apologize to a man over the internet on somebody else's platform? <laughs> that ain't no goddamn apology. Man, are you kidding me? Stephen A. would have been the type of man back in the Western days. Motherfucker wouldn't even turn around, take two steps before they would have shot Stephen A. Smith. This is the most disparate. He acts just like a female. But I did apologize. Like he's doing you a favor. Nigga, that ain't no motherfucking apology. You care your bald head weasel self up with the same place that you run those blooper reels on. The same place that you was getting up there, that white man platform, and it being number one, that you talking shit about a man and disparaging his name. That's where you care your bald head ass at. And then after that, you bring your little bald head ass on my platform and you apologize like a man. And then after that, you work on getting me my goddamn money back. And that's how you apologize, nigga. Words ain't shit. Y'all fall for the banana and the tailpipe. Yeah, I respect Mark Jackson, but not a lot of people know about his platform yet. And shout out to Sino. Sino, a real one. He said the same thing in his video that I was trying to play for y'all. You're going to goddamn apologize on every, one of your homeboys platform. Then you're going to be such a bitch that you're going to say the most asinine statement in the world. And, and I was going to play the video because Sino pointed it out too. I couldn't wait to point that out. As a matter of fact, I missed it in my video. I, no, I didn't. I said it, but I didn't say it in the way that Sino said it. So I, I was waiting to play this damn video. It was perfectly said. Nigga, he tried to gloss over the fact that he didn't even know that Mark Jackson coached me. 
Because if he knew Mark Jackson coached me, he would have never said it in the way that he said it. He said, you can't find Kwame Brown just couldn't play. He had small hands. He was trash. This isn't that the same shit that made him famous. Same bullshit story. Uh, he runs with this narrative. He says this overlooking the fact that Coach Mark Jackson coached me. You can't find nobody that'll go against what I said. Mark Jackson said, well, I just have to let you know I coached Kwame Brown. He was good for me. He was good for us. <laughs> so right after you said this dumb shit, we, we didn't even have to go look far. The person that didn't know you for playing said, I can play. He never, he, you literally was on a show where you're from the same neighborhood as Mark Jackson, the legendary Mark Jackson. You're from the same neighborhood and he vouched for a guy from Georgia before he even vouched for you. I never heard Mark Jackson say you can play. <laughs> no, nowhere in that video. Matter of fact, I haven't had nobody in life say you can play basketball, Stephen A. I never, I, listen, real shit, y'all, real spill. How come, hold on, am I, can y'all see me? Okay. How come Mark Jackson did not say, how come Mark Jackson didn't say, man, listen, man, Stephen A., I know everybody keep talking about this one point and all this shit, but before you cracked your knee, boy, you was hooping just like me. Man, I thought you were going to take my spot, Stephen A. I was worried, like, me and you were going neck to neck in the neighborhood. How come Mark Jackson ain't say nothing like that? Hmm? How come you never done that? I got popcorn in my teeth. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Where they find these so-called analysts? I hope y'all don't see all this popcorn and, and uh, snacks in my teeth. Matter of fact, where my flaws pick at? Yeah, I got it. Most pick it in. But uh, yeah, yeah. All I want to know is why? Why folk come? Why folk come? Mark Jackson did not speak up for Stephen A. Like he did for me. He's done hurt all this ridicule Stephen A. Smith been getting for the last couple of days for 1.5. Jason Whitlock uh, been beating him up in the media. I've been beating him up for the last three years. How come, how come Mark Jackson ain't just say, look, man, Stephen A., I just want to go on record let people know before you broke your knee when you was a kid, you was a hooper. Like, he ain't even say, man, when you was at such and such high school, did they play high school ball together? <laughs> Jim's out of you. Nobody, bro. I'm talking about nobody in the world vouch for this dude. I don't understand it. You go to my neighborhood, they're going to say, boy, Kwame used to be out here playing grown men. <laughs> when he was a kid. I think go get angry on that court now. <laughs> uh, he a nice guy, but till he get on that court, then he get angry. This dude, yeah, but a big mouth. He got all that mouth. He from the, they, that was the, listen, to me, that show right there that they just did, was the worst show that they could have done for Stephen A. Smith. Because to me, that shows he has zero history of basketball. There's no way you could be around somebody that legendary, Mark Jackson, and you played around him as a kid? Man, ain't no way. He's trying to apologize to Isaiah Thomas for Michael Jordan. Isaiah said, let Michael tell me that. He got my number. That's what I'm talking about. He ain't nothing but a little butt kisser. How are you going to apologize for another man, but then he can't even come and apologize like a man? 
he can't even try to atone for his stuff like a man. He want to get on somebody else's show and say, yeah, I apologize. I didn't know it was going to hurt him. Then be condescending. Nigga, man, listen, let me shut up. <laughs> Boy, look at here. He said, I'm a Venice Beach legend. That's what I'm saying. Anybody that, that played, anybody that who, especially if you was around a Mark Jackson. If I grew up around Mark Jackson, I'm going to find him to play against him or uh, with him every day. He, he not got them because I know if I play against him, I'm going to get better. If I play with him, I'm going to get better. So either way it goes, it's a win-win. And they from up the block, and he ain't never played with Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson ain't say, boy, I remember when we whipped your team. <laughs> Nothing. That was the worst day his handlers could have let him do. I know what they thought. They thought, and they didn't do their research or something, because they should have never let him say what he said. You won't find nobody to disagree with me on that. Yeah, well, actually, Kwame played well for me. <laughs> hey, he tried to hurry up and say, well, 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 thanks for telling me that. No, shut your mouth and let that man finish, you punk. Matter of fact, do I have that video? This nigga running his mouth so fast, you ain't going to find nobody that disagree with that. Well, 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 thanks for telling me that. I'm sorry. Look, dummy. Nah, I don't got that one. Ooh, ooh. This little dummy. I got it in my phone somewhere. Mm-mm-mm. I wonder if they'll strike this video if I put a banner up. If I just hear the words of the movie. I take it that. Well, no, nah, I ain't gonna do that. I don't want them. Yeah, they watching me like a hoe. Yeah, they watching me like a hoe. Let me take she down. Free my nigga Rodney. A salute to you, one crack news. Well, yeah, man, this shit's sad, but a cover up. And then. They don't want the rest of that video seen over breaking down the whole Carmelo Anthony thing and how close he would have been to LeBron, uh, if not past him, if he would have still been a starter in this league. I told y'all a long time ago, stars ain't born, they're given to you. you we, me and... uh. Even though I still root for LeBron to this day because it, it bolsters my argument about why you should never stop a player from coming out of high school. If y'all are arguing a debate about whether two players that come out of high school are the greatest of all time, then how can the hell can you have a ban on high school? You're trying to make a ban on the whole the whole enterprise on a, on a player being able to make a choice like that, but a kid can make a choice whether they can cut off their genitals. Just imagine this, y'all. 17, 18-year-old young men can't make a decision to go play basketball because we not ready, but little children are ready to slice off their dingers. They, they can fight in Congress for this, but young men can go fight war, they can do everything else except sign an NBA contract. Make it make any sense. Star, they're, they're sitting here trying to steal away these young kids' joy by using my Kwame Brown story, trying to make my story some tragic story so that they can justify blocking free enterprise. Because it doesn't make any sense. The only thing that they're doing is blocking off kids from going to school so that they can make money for those college and universities. Imagine how much money Carmelo Anthony made Syracuse by walking onto that campus with all that talent he got, won a championship, walked out of there the man, and then walked onto an NBA court and should have won the rookie of the year, but because he wasn't selected. 
he wasn't protected. He didn't win it. And because he wasn't selected and because he wasn't protected, then there's no time to start no more. And Carmelo could play in the league now. And don't talk about his defense because don't none of them play defense. But if you want to talk about getting you a bucket, he can still get you a bucket. But we know this. We be seeing them rob these people right in front of us, but we don't want to say the truth. We don't want to say the truth. The niggas always catch up to the party too late. Once they finish their real plan, which is making the league an overseas situation, where it's international, that's why all these rules come into play so these little skinny... Uh, uh, slender Europeans can run around and just be skilled and score because they know they're more skilled than us. Hell, they send them to skilled skilled schools and things of that nature to learn the skills. The big man on down to the guards. And their basketball IQ is better than ours because we teach American players just step back, step back, score. That's why every kid in AAU is thinking they're making the team better by shooting the goddamn ball every time instead of making the team better by getting everybody involved. So that's why the teams with the European players on it, they might not be filling up all the stat sheets, uh, Jokic is and all that, but the European players, when you got one of those European players on your team, they know how to play the game, and they usually win championships with those European players. So that's why uh, they still like you high flyers, and they like you scores. But when it comes down to championships, they're going to get them European players because they know the game. They know less is more at times. Less is more. Sometimes you give less of what you really can do to give your team more. And a lot of our American players are losing sight of that. They forgetting what the fuck they played basketball for. They think they played basketball just to be the guy who scored all the points. Basketball is a team game about winning. And just because you scored a lot of points, don't mean if you didn't win, it ain't nothing for you to look at in that stat sheet. If you look at high school ball now, every one of those boys right after the game, they running to go get the stat sheet. There was a rule on my team. If we lost the game, it ain't nothing that stat sheet going to show you. It's going to show you L. So if you touch that goddamn stat sheet in the back of the bus, you ran a foul to Bob. And Bob was me. <laughs> but shit, they ain't let me be Bob in the lead. Nigga, we had MJ. <laughs> and MJ had a couple goddamn henchmen. Yeah, you can't be Bob around MJ. Shit, that nigga was Bob. That nigga was your boss. <laughs> that, nigga was, that nigga was everything. <laughs> oh, shit. B-ball boring now and sad. It's because it, you can't be competitive. And you, and the thing that I miss about the game, I don't give a damn about all your skills. I can impose my will on you. And see, the players who still play like that, Draymond get a little dirty, but he had imposed his will on people. That's what we used to see, and that's what I'm used to going again. Hey, nigga, you might be better than me, but tonight you ain't because I'm going to impose my will on you tonight. Nigga, you not finna move without feeling my elbow on your stomach, your back. Everywhere you go, nigga, I'm right there. And they can't do that now. It's almost like they protecting these players like little ladies or something. Like, God dang, let them play. Yeah, run, run, for sure. But M didn't look at no motherfucking stat sheet if they lost. No, M, man, please. That motherfucker, he want to look at that shit. Uh, now, he look at the turnovers. When he was upstairs, he looked at everything. What's the cop out? Yeah, see, that, see, that's what they want. This is what people don't understand. This shit is all about money. Y'all think it's just about them going to the school. It's a kinetic chain. They not finna let you skip no step, boy. 
Think about it. I don't have no white man over me. I don't have a college that I belong to. So University of Florida ain't making no money off me. That's why a lot of the boosters want to kick me in the ass. They just forgave me, and I thank you for it, Florida and all the Gator fans, because I love y'all. But I just understand the game. And I'm sorry that they don't get it, but I get it. And they're going to make money off of these players for the rest of their life. They're not getting none of that guy. Carmelo ain't going to make a dollar off all them jerseys Carmelo sell. And when he retired, they bought, probably bought more of his jerseys because it's going to go up. If he make it into the Hall of Fame or anything like that, they're going to buy some more of his college jersey. The NBA is going to sell more of his jerseys too. They still selling Kobe Bryant jerseys. Imagine if LeBron, Kobe, and all these guys would have went to college. Imagine what Kobe college jersey sale would have went to if he would have went to college in, in, in his uh, untimely death. Imagine what they would have sold in his jersey sales. Because uh, collectors would have been thinking like, man, this is going to be worth something. Just telling you, this shit is all about money. That's why the feds follow the money. Of course, that's why you can't have no uh, black people getting their own shoe and all that. They made him seem like a bad father. But how you got three kids in the NBA and he was a bad father? Well, look at the one. He stole something. That's his business. His daddy ain't telling him to steal nothing. <laughs> Shit. Man, look here. His daddy got them got three sons to the NBA. That's a hell of a goddamn daddy. Is he perfect? No. And why is you looking for perfection? Why is that not the greatest story? And why is that not one of the greatest stories of this of this uh time? That a black man had a wife because I y'all know what it is. He didn't ring none of the bells he was supposed to. He got a white wife, so that that's cut that back. You know, we say we ain't a racist America, but I can guarantee if he had a black wife, this would be a totally different conversation. He had a white he got a white wife. But he's a black man that they always say that need to get married, need to raise their family because it's better with two. And when he showed you an example of two and had three boys make it to the NBA. And instead of them praising that, they wanted to they wanted to mock this man, get him angry, talk about how he's talking like that's stupid. Of course, he's dangerous to the mainstream media. This man told a white woman, stay in your lane. <laughs> hey, hey, stay in your lane. And he just telling her that, like, you don't know what you're talking about. He wasn't making it like that. You're not qualified to talk about this basketball thing like he is, so stay in your lane. That's how he was saying it. They tried to make it like he was aggressive and angry and a threat. Like, come on. Not tell Stephen A, nigga, stay in your lane. You a guest, nigga. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the only reason why them niggas bigging you up, Cam, because uh, the, re the reason why Cam bigged them up is because that nigga got, he got pulled at them networks. That's it. It's all a conglomerate. And I'm outside of it. We all accomplice in this devil's world. So yeah, they talk all this Wakanda black shit, but listen to the white media talking about a motherfucker that made it to the, the highest level of a game. Right? It's, it's just astonishing to me. That's why I call them fake news. I know how they do fake news. <laughs> you get the whole world to think a motherfucker can't play a game that. And then I started looking for all my tournaments, all the Peach Jam and all the shit that's recorded now. I don't know how Kwame Brown greatest fans be finding these goddamn recordings. I don't get it. Because when Stephen A was like, he don't have a move to put together. I said, man, I got to find that Sonny's Round Ball Classic where I won MVP with that big-ass trophy back there. There was like 20 cameras in there. Ain't nobody got the goddamn footage of this clown say, I can't dribble, I can't move, I can't shoot. It's like, what? Nigga, I had them people losing their goddamn mind on what I can do with the ball, boy. I had them people losing their goddamn mind. Big 6'11 nigga bringing a ball up the court like a guard. They ain't never seen no shit like that.
<laughs> maybe, maybe Kwame Brown greatest fans get fired. A clip of Stephen A. taking over the Rucker. Nah, I don't think nobody can find that shit. I don't think nobody can find that shit. I miss your super chat. Uh, who said that? Yeah, he won't let your super chat go back up. Oh, there you go. I was taking this guy uh, at work about, I was talking to this guy at work about sports, and this dummy said Jordan couldn't guard Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant? I said to him, he would be young. So, yeah, he can guard Kevin Durant. Man, you lost your goddamn mind. Jordan to get all up underneath that. But nobody can really guard Kevin Durant, but his length would bother MJ. But I think if it's up under them old rules, MJ going to elbow the shit out of Kevin Durant. But Kevin is stronger than people give him credit for. But that Jordan that, that started pumping iron, that motherfucker was strong. Yeah, when he fell in love with the weight room, that motherfucker was strong. But Kevin gonna score now. He gonna score. That motherfucker gonna score on anybody. He's a good score. But MJ would make it tough on him up under them old rules. Up under the new rules, I don't think MJ could bother Kevin Durant shot. Nah, Kevin could shoot that goddamn thing over anybody. MJ was strong with no left hand. Carcino does the same thing to LeBron that Stephen A does to you, only worse. Man, that's cap. Carcino just don't think LeBron should be in that GOAT debate. Does he think LeBron can play? Yes, he even said that. But is he the GOAT like y'all said? He doesn't think so. But salute to you, TP. TP be ready to fight by LeBron, boy. God damn. <laughs> That nigga TP be mad about Brian Brian. But got down. I think it's about a cap. But they know what they doing, man. This shit is a script, man. When, when y'all gonna wake up and, and, and understand that this shit is a script for real? Let me get my water. We y'all gonna wake up and understand you in a simulation, you in a game. Motherfucker tell you playing parenthood when they really k killing or ending the life of a baby. But it's planned parenthood. They say the nice things, but they mean the devilish things. <laughs> and uh what's that other word that I we learned from uh the great what's his name? Dr. Phil, what's that word Dr. Phil said that we learned that they was talking about? What was that word? But they was really talking about ch 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 chopping off babies. News and sports are scripted for sure. Yeah, they call it reassignment surgery. Made it sound real nice to say they chopping off you know what. Nah, it wasn't circumcision. Who will be in the NBA Finals this year? Shit, they keep talking about LeBron. He going again. <laughs> hey, and, and then Charles Barkley, he finally said what I said. Why, if it's not a script, is it a privilege to get to the Eastern Conference?
Hello, hello. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? <laughs> Whippy tell me. <laughs> hey, Whippy, you know what? I'm going to go on my other channel. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something, Whippy. I'm not going to tell you on this channel, but I'm going to tell you something that start with an F on my other channel, Whippy. <laughs> Whippy, you a mess. Man, it done made me forget my train of thought. I don't know what I said. This ain't right, man. They got the game rigged. T Mac was not more skilled than Kobe. Boy, that was boy. I don't know. That's close there, boy. T Mac had game game. Oh, you was talking about who's gonna make the NBA finals. Shit. <laughs> hey listen who is most marketable that's all I'm going to say who going to make them the most bucks that's who going to the final one on one who win Kobe versus T-Mac I think they played one on one plenty of times I think they would go back and forth but that's gonna be that's they they both gonna lose some games trust me and with two players that skilled hey you ain't gonna get no unanimous win unless they're gonna play one game and that's it but if you play a couple of games i'm pretty sure it, it would have went back and forth knicks versus the lakers knicks got the storyline this year <laughs> yeah <laughs> That no, boy, shut up, boy, shut up before they turn this shit off again. I ain't saying nothing. Every time I talk sports, somehow something happened to my page. I, I'm going to shut the fuck up this time. Let me stop. Knock on wood. And let me stop talking about sports. I'm going to go argue with some dudes on my other channel. I can't really talk about sports. Every time I talk about sports, they get mad. And I get a flag. So I'm. Uh -uh. For real, EJ, I'm telling you, every time. My computer ain't turned back on yet. I got a fucking brand new MacBook, and this shit ain't turned back on yet. This shit. I'm going to have to go to the Geek Squad. Yeah, I ain't saying nothing. Somebody already tried to blow my house up. Hey, man, look here, man. Stephen A., go ahead and come on my show, apologize. Go ahead and work on me a deal so you can give me some of my money back you owe me. And then I'll leave you alone, man. I won't tell no more truth. Y'all ain't got to blow me up and shit, fuck up my page. Well, Odom speaks. Mine is trash now. I can't even get it to turn on. <laughs> I, I I don't know how I buy new shit that don't work. I don't know. I ain't no MacBook had a two year shelf life. What is it? Two and a half years. Yeah, two and a half year shelf life, and then it's over for a Mac. Stephen A is a bad man. Brick, just pay up. I need it for March 10th. Oh, man, my foot just cracked. Where can I find your high school jersey? 
Shit, nowhere. They done stole my jersey out the Raptors. Don't nobody want to like a bus, but everybody want to steal from a bus. <laughs> Motherfucker stole, went up there and stole my jersey out the Raptors. So the, the jersey that's up there is a replica. I said, damn. Somebody want to make some money off me somehow. KB said, mofo to uh, Stephen A. Smith for me. They wanted to blow me up. How come it's okay for Stephen A. Smith to talk bad about players? If Carcino was affecting uh, LeBron's contract, I'd be like, damn, Cino, you wrong as hell. But uh, I don't think Carcino affected LeBron's contracts in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And Stephen A. has called for guys to be, have lower contracts from black men from football to basketball to, did I see him do that in baseball? No, not in baseball. But definitely football and basketball. So that's that's the answer I can give you. <laughs> Nigga talking about Gilly stole your jersey. I wish y'all could have been in a fly on the wall at them workouts. Oh my God. Eton Thomas saw him. I wish y'all could have been Shane Battier. They telling me to go to college and they brought Shane Battier from Duke. And this is a guy who won a championship. And this is a guy that's supposed to be an all world. <laughs> and Shane Battier was good in their games, their workouts. <laughs> he was slow as shit. <laughs> but he's a talented player. Boy, I can't take that away from Shane Battier, but when they rolled that goddamn ball out there, shit. It was ding, ding, his own. That was all she wrote. I wonder what it would have been like being the first option just one time. And that's crazy to hear a number one draft pick say that because that's never supposed to happen. But I never hear no sports analysts or none of them say that shit. They don't never say, well, hey, this guy was never the first option. And, and you know, he was never going to be the first option on the team with MJ anyway. So stop it. Instead, they do the bullshit. You a Duke fan? I'm a Duke fan too. Because while he was slapping the floor, I was going around him. <laughs> Y'all spot, boom, hit the floor and shit. Did I get a chance to guard Carl Malone? Yeah, I had to guard everybody. Shit. They're going there and get Carl Malone heated up. And then they put me on him after he blazing hot. And I'm like, come on, dog. Why you ain't start me on him so I can file him and trip him or do something? Boy, Carl Malone was stronger than a man. I thought that nigga was part robot. That old nigga was strong, boy. <laughs> shit. Hey, when you finish playing Carl Malone, you go lift weights. You be like, shit, I got to get stronger. My After my first game playing Carl Malone, I went and lift weights. I said, never again, nobody gonna push me like that. <laughs> that motherfucker. Boy, you ain't seen the type of strong that, that dude was. Country boy that liked to lift weights. That joker was strong. And he's a dirty cheap shot too. Cause that motherfucker got his knee in my chest that day. And he gonna come down and tell me, are you okay? Hell no, I ain't okay. You running like a locomotive and then you stick your knee all the way up in my damn chest. He ain't get me with that elbow. He got me with the knee. That motherfucker dirty, boy. Carl Malone gave MJ a knuckle sandwich. You saw the elbow that he gave Isaiah Thomas? Nah, 
He swung them elbow, but boy, he coming down the lane with them knees high. That joker running like a freight train. I'm like, dang, this nigga old and don't get tired. But we was out there in Utah. But he ran like that. He ran better when he came to the East Coast. It's like he didn't get tired. He was just, every play, you better be ready to sprint back. That is like a track meet playing against Carl Malone, boy. He trying, he's sprinting for layups. I'm like, this joker, this big, but can run this fast. This is crazy. Boy, that joker there didn't get tired, boy. He damn so delivered. That joker did not get tired. You talking about bigs running the floor? That joker was gone. You heard John Stockton was stocky in real life? Man, that mug, that joker there chuck you so hard coming through the lane. You couldn't get no layups. Like all these bigs that roll to the basket and get these layups back in the day. I mean, like they do now, that, that wouldn't happen back in the day. Because back in the day, they didn't care that you shot threes. They protected the inside. So those guards come in, boom, hit that big, and then get back out to their man. If you made a three, you made a three. But these guys shoot so good now, you try that shit like you did back in the day. They might blow you out. Did, did Kobe respect LeBron? Hell no. <laughs> Kobe couldn't stand LeBron. A lot of NBA players didn't like LeBron for what he did. But Kobe couldn't stand. Well, I ain't going to say that because he ain't here to clean it up. So from what I remember, from things he said, no, I'll say that. But he's not here to elaborate. So, But I think LeBron might know that. That's why he keep trying to do everything Kobe did. But... Yeah, Kobe, if anybody knew anything about Kobe, just the notion of linking up with two other guys to get a, a championship, he ain't he ain't with that. Did I ever go against Tyson Chandler? Yeah. Mm -hmm, at the Peach Jam. I remember having to adjust to get my shot over that mother. I ain't, that was my first time playing against somebody that damn tall. So playing him at the Peach Jam, it got me ready to play him again when I saw him in the league. But that, but that joker was he was all every bit of seven foot two, and at that time I was only six nine. I got drafted at six nine and a half, six ten, and then I grew. But Shit, my first shot, I think he blocked it. That went up. I went up, I went up thinking I had a clean layup because I'm like, shit, I'm just going to hurry up and quick it. I wasn't a real big dunker. I was just hurry up, lay that thing up so I can get on back two point, two point. And uh, shit, I thought I would land it up. That shit, you motherfucker. <laughs> that was bad. I used to get bad off stuff like that. So I, the next time I put my shoulder into him, boom, before I got it off and I got it up there. KB, you like playing against Tim Duggan? I loved it. LeBron, ask LeBron Prophet about what I said about Tim Duncan, and he thought I was crazy. <laughs> the kid baby in the tumbo. Yeah, I played against the, my kid baby tumbo. Top five underrated players, man, I'm on that swagger dash. I can't think back that far. <laughs> I got some good names that I'll probably put together. One on one, me versus Stephen A. Smith going to twelve. <laughs> hey, listen, the man failed. Got them trying to shoot a jump shot. The man was trying to step into a jump shot and bust his ass. You, you don't believe? 
Hold on. I think I got that one. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. Doesn't have the heart, the passion, or anything that comes with it. Now, this man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He <laughs> Stephen A. Smith was the greatest player. Uh, was the greatest player to play in the Boo Williams tournament? Nah, that man was garbage. I played in that tournament too. KB, did you guard Yao Ming? Hell yeah, man. I block Yao Ming shit, man. Get that shit. I block Yao Ming jump shot. Yeah, I don't play with Yao Ming. <laughs> Yao Ming done gave me a 40 piece, I think. 45, boy. Yao Ming, man, when he gained that weight, boy, he was, I said, shoot. I think Shaq and Yao Ming tore my shoulder up. I was about the only person that can keep them out of the paint like I wanted to. Top five handlers of all time. Shit, Jamal Crawford got to be up there. Right there, White Chocolate got to be up there. Stoudemire got to be up there. AI. Well, that's a lot of motherfuckers that can pack that thing, boy. That 1.5 kills me every time. Jamel and AI for sure. Jamal and AI for sure. Man, Jamal... Old right now, I can still pat that thing, boy. Jamal got that thing on. He he got it on a rope. I'm talking about he do. He got that playground play with you type of handle. Boom, boom. But he make that shit look smooth. How he got control of the ball? He dribbled backwards at you. I was like, what the? He turned around backwards, dribbling at a guy. I'm like. Man, if I would have tried something like that, backing up, dribbling backwards at a guy, between my legs and all that, man, I'd have been done fail. Somebody would have been done, took the ball and did a whammy jam. Oh my God. Free my nigga whippy. Free my nigga whippy. Free, free my nigga whippy. Man, when he gained that weight, boy, Yao was a beast. Yao was a beast when he gained that weight. But, Sino, man, thanks to you, they won't let my laptop cut back on, man. <laughs> I tried to play your video. Laptop say no. So I got to go to the shop. I just did a, uh, I just did a uh, video on my laptop. And put it on my other channel, on my 2.0. So I don't know how it's just all of a sudden it's broke. It won't even turn on. I don't know what the hell going on. Who? Pearl Washington daughter. Man, y'all crazy. But listen, man, I'm at an hour and 22 minute mark. I'm mad that I can't play that video. I'm going to figure it out. Stephen A., you already know how to, you know, atone for your sins, man. If not, I think I'm going to take a world tour and get the list of the colleges and high schools you spoke at. And let's see if them people still work there or know about how you got a chance to be at a school talking. For what? What did you ever do but talk? Did they look at your resume before they let you run your mouth? 
Because up until then, you ain't done nothing but talk. So, either we up out of this thing. Let me see who this is. Go and eat, KB? No, I just ate. I'm about to eat again at about 7 o'clock. I ate them patties. I ate two patties. I ate jerk uh, plantain patty. I ate a lentil patty. And then I had the, uh, the rice, the chickpeas, and the uh, mushrooms. Yeah, that was, that was I'm eating good, man. And then I just had trail mix. God did you a favor not playing the video. <laughs> boy, this nigga TP a tie hard fan, boy. Today's menu's fish. Nah, I can't eat no fish. Not right now. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna eat some collard greens, some sweet potato, and some quinoa rice. And then I got Later on, I got me some uh, Thai noodles with veggies. Yeah. Who's the biggest crybaby, LeBron or Lopez? I don't know. I have no idea. Kevin Garnett was a better player in Boston than he was in Minnesota. Shit. They just ain't winning in Minnesota. Boy, Kevin Garnett was a, when he could move, man, please. Man, Kevin Garnett will uh, fake you out, fake you back into block, almost blocking the shot, and then fake you out of that and shoot it the other way. I'll be like, damn, he done fake so many times. Like, I was like, one day he he did that little rock, 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 and then he act like he was turned that way and then turned back that way. I'm like, damn, I had him on the other rock when he turned. I'm like, yeah, I'm for the time this shit. Because he had to fake me over there. I jumped over there. And then he had faked over here because he had faked over there. I jumped over there. And he was shooting the ball over there. I'm like, damn. This nigga fake, 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 fake. Y'all just didn't know how that move worked. That nigga did that little shimmy. When Kevin Garnett put that little shimmy shake on you, boy, you don't know which way he got them going. <laughs> he was a direct shooter man listen he had that little shimmy shake in the block you didn't know which shoulder he was coming over at first he was predictable he coming over that left shoulder he started being able to go over both shoulders it was crazy he studied Elijah one man when he added that shake to his game that shit was so hard to guard Kevin McHale taught him to pull. Man, Kevin McHale did a great job. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin McHale did a great job, boy, because that shimmy shake, you don't know where the hell he going. I, I used to be like, man, I'm finna trip this nigga in a minute. Oh, on my end, I can't see it. That's why I just told you on my end. Dumb damn lady always trying to start shit. Listen to what you're saying, lady. I see everyone on the list clearly. That's what you see. What I see is not clear, ma'am. I said the live timer is in the way. Do you see the timer? No, you don't see the timer. Because I see the timer. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. But, yeah, man, I'm up out of this day, man. I'm going to go over to my other channel and curse so YouTube can maybe, somebody can turn my computer back on or something. I don't know what just happened. Carcino, that was a great live. Y'all go check out Carcino for Life. He did a great job about a live about LeBron James. And he agreed with LeBron James. So, TP, I don't know what you're mad at. But y'all go check that live out. Some great information in that live from start to finish. Go check it out i think i might go uh you'll see <laughs> i can't say hell no
I can't say, but I'll holler, I'm gone.